Hi, I am Marty Nemco, and welcome to another edition of How to Do Life. Today, we're going to talk about recreation in era COVID, the era of COVID. Um, there are certain recreations that even in the most strict lockdowns, they can't take away from us. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the art of making the most of walking, reading, listening and playing to music. I'll even play something for you on the keyboard. Uh, eating. They certainly can't take that away from us. And home uh, and doing more with your home while you're at home. And also um, what I call just because letters, the long lost art of uh, letter writing. So walking, I mean, it seems like it must be a uh, pretty obvious thing to do. And yes, sometimes I just want to walk to zone out and relax and take my dog out for uh, a necessary um, pee, pooping, and exercise. You see, he's here. There he is, sleeping, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but also, um, it can be a, a tool, believe it or not, for personal growth. And that's because you're not distracted by all the stuff that uh, you could be doing in the house or phone or whatever, unless you carry your phone with you, which you might or might not. Um, and the fresh air uh, and the uh, the exercise actually improves your circulation, so you're more likely to do good thinking. So, um, a couple of things that you could do, if you you know, if, is to take either you know, as you know, you're going to be planning for your daily walk or your hike. Think about um, save maybe a problem, save your walk for when you're ready to grapple with a problem. For example, right before I made this radio uh, program, this YouTube thing, um, YouTube video. I took a walk uh, with my dog and meditated upon it. And I bring a little memo pad called the flip note. I don't have it with me, so I can't show it to you. But it's like a little memo pad that's got a pen attached you can fit in your pocket. Um, and I was just, I, I just wasn't obsessively thinking, but I was thinking about, okay, what do I want to say? Uh, uh, what kind of order might I put it? Because you can see I'm not, I don't script anything. It's really, I believe that uh, when you script it, it may be more perfect, but you take the chemistry and the humanity out of it. If, if you want to see something that's perfect, you read one, you know, you read an article. But um, so when, when I walk or when you walk, you might want to bring a problem with you or it doesn't be a problem or something you may want to grow in. Let's say you're, you're saying to yourself, you know, I'm uh, really afraid of losing my job. Uh, what the hell do I need to do to ensure that I don't lose it? And, you know, I, so I don't let the fear get the best of me. If I do lose the job, it's not the end of the earth. Maybe it's for the best, end of the world. Maybe it's for the best. What should I do um, to get a better job if I get let go? Or maybe the problem is, maybe you've, you've had a bad attitude your whole life. You tend to be high maintenance, complaining, not letting enough things roll off your back. Or maybe you're a doormat, maybe the opposite, and you've been taking too much crap from the world and for, for, for one person. So doing your walking while uh, thinking about something can be... Um, a really nice way to use that COVID restricted activity of walking. Also, think about how you that multitasking is. You're getting your exercise if you take a vigorous walk. Your dog, if you have one, gets his or her exercise and gets to pee or poop. You get to have some low distraction time for problem solving. And as I often do, my, I take my hike to Trader Joe's, my favorite supermarket. And then when I'm walking back, I'm walking back with roughly 20 pounds of stuff. So I'm certainly getting a full dose of exercise and getting my shopping done. Talk about the ultimate in, um, in multitasking. So certainly um, walking can be a, uh, uh, a COVID friendly and more, maybe more useful activity than we, we normally uh, give it credit for. And certainly walking, unlike running uh, uh, or basketball or whatever, it's really easy on the joints. You're less likely to hurt yourself, although I've been known to trip on a raised sidewalk. Uh, um, but it's one of the safer and yet healthier exercises. And physicians are generally saying that the best exercise, no matter what your age, is walking as vigorously as you can comfortably do it, rather than um, really vigorous exercise like marathoning or triathleting or whatever. Um, uh, it's something you can sustain for life. And it's, you know, it doesn't pass my common sense test that you can run your heart rate at 60 or 70 beats a minute uh, all the for 23 hours and 30 minutes a day and then suddenly triple it, that that can be healthy long term. And in fact, as I've looked at people, um, 
uh, as they who are older in their 50s, 60s, and 70s who were vigorous exercises, actually their skin elasticity looks bad, which is a proxy for aging. Um, I'm, so I'm not convinced that extreme exercise is, is the right answer. I think frequent moderate exercise is the answer. As they say, sitting is the new smoking. And so getting out of your chair for at least five minutes every hour and then you know frequently taking longer walks or hikes. I take a, oh, one 45-minute hike every day with the dog and then maybe three or four, five to 10-minute ones with the dog. Anyway, enough about walking. Now I turn to reading. Um, you know, not everybody is a reader of, of great American novels or uh, big tomes of nonfiction. But I do think that the article is perhaps the most underrated form of reading, especially in an era of Google, when simply a Google search on whatever it is you're interested in will instantly get the uh, a, a list of articles that are not random, but they're the ones that are most read and most sent, what they call back, backlinked, so it's sent to other people. Um, so on virtually any imaginable topic, you can get what you want. And an article is the distilled wisdom, or in the case of a short story or whatever, something you get a lot of bang per minute of your time, and it's free. And unlike in books, which very often when you finish writing a book, you submit it to the publisher and it takes months to get it reviewed and ready for publication. So sometimes the, op the information is obsolete. When you are um, reading an article that you got off of the, off the internet, very often it's very current. So it's an, and free. It's just an amazing resource, an underappreciated form of reading. Now, of course, sometimes you do want something longer form that you can stick your teeth into and look forward to for days or weeks at a time. And really, the best way to find a book that's right for you is Amazon. Even if libraries are open, uh, you know, which they're not in many COVID uh, areas, um, but. Uh, you know, they only have a certain limited collection and you can only borrow them for a while and you, you end up feeling pressure. And bookstores only have a tiny fraction of the books that are available. Whereas at Amazon, they have every, every, almost every one of them, millions and millions of books in print and out of print. And they're available, uh, used often for a real bargain price and you get it delivered to your door, not having to schlep into the car or mass transit and get to the bookstore and park and hope, then hopefully you find it. Amazon is just amazing to me, and I can uh, I really have appreciated it. I've bought too many books. It's almost too fun to buy books. So I've got my bedroom is filled with books that I should be reading, and not just you know physical books, but my, I love my Kindle. Because, for example, there's this great book that I'm, I'm reading. I usually read three or four books at the same time. Um, where I, so that way I have something, whatever I'm in the mood to, to read, I've got some, I can choose it from it. Um, I'm reading um, a book by uh, Jacob... It's about a guy who, I can't even remember, it's a, uh, about a guy who's got one day left to live. Or he, he's choosing to commit suicide at age 75, and it's about his last day. Uh, Jacob something, I don't know. Somebody's last day, I think that's what it is. Anyway, but I'm also reading a very fat book called The Art of the Essay. And I really wish it were on Kindle because, you know, I'm lying in bed reading this thing, and it's this 500, 600-page heavy, fairly large book. Um, but my point is that I have lots of books on Kindle that I can, you know, it's light, it fits right on my, you know, on my, easily on my chest without weighing me down. I can take it with me if I want to go out and read on the grass or whatever. Um, so um, and searching Amazon on whatever topic or title or author you like, and then you use the Amazon's look inside the book feature and you can skim the book. Uh, you know, table of contents, turn to any page at random, uh, uh, or start at the beginning. It's just an amazing, amazing resource. Um, that's all I want to say. Oh yeah, I do want to say one more thing about reading. I have found one of the more useful things I do when I read for, for a, a purpose is to create a nugget file. When I find something of interest, if I'm reading it on the Kindle, I simply highlight it, and then when I get to my computer, I have a word processing file called Nuggets, and I simply copy it in. Or if I'm reading something on screen, like in the case of an article, I simply copy and paste it in a Nugget file. And that way, you know, we all have learned things. We say, oh, that's a cool idea or whatever, a cool phrase or a cool language, a cool word I want to learn or whatever, um, and we then forget it. But if you've got it in a Nugget file, it's there forever, and you can, you know, return to it whenever you want. So I think creating a Nugget file is a really good way to make the most of your reading. Um, now let's talk a little about music. Of course, that's another example. And by the way, on music, you can, for you know, 99 cents a cut legally, you can get almost any 
uh, any cut of music, any any song, any classical piece, whatever. You know, amazing to me. And then you can download it onto any of your devices, onto your computer, onto your your iPod, your your iPad, your your phone. It's just just amazing to me. Uh, and I listen to, I download stuff, and I, you know, my car is just a Prius, but it's got a Bluetooth connection. So I bring my put my I download it to my phone, and then. Uh, I, I it syncs with my in my car and I'm listening to my my play mix uh, through the my the speakers in my car which is better better sounding than headphones or a uh, uh, certainly better than the speakers that were that used to be in the iPhone anyway um, what else so yeah uh, so listening to music can be extraordinarily rewarding I'm just going to mention a few things uh, that just pop to mind. Um, I really love when I'm wanting to think and just sit there. I have a, a, a nice easy chair that I will sit and think. And I have this thing called Spiegel im Spiegel. It's mirrors and mirrors. Um, this um, really meditative thing that I really love to listen to. And you can actually set it to repeat. It's a 10 minute thing, but if I want to sit for longer than that, you right click on it as it's playing and you use, you use the word loop. And now all of a sudden it will keep replaying until, you, until it stops. You don't have to get up and... Uh, and replay it. It's a very cool, very cool tool. Other musics uh, I, I like, and I have this very anomalous taste. I love show tunes. So you know, classic Rodgers and Hammerstein or, uh, uh, overtures are my favorite. So uh, like the Overture to Oklahoma, or The Sound of Music, or South Pacific, or The King and I, or uh, other overtures like Gypsy. Listen to those. You're going to see orchestral music at its finest. Just beautiful. Uh, also, if I want to listen to vocals, my favorite is a, a, a Barbara Streisand CD called Partners, where she partners with different men and sings these beautiful love songs of a variety of sorts. Those are just great things to listen to. Those are my tastes, obviously, and I'm old, and so that's not necessarily reminiscent. Now I want to talk a little bit about playing. Many people, uh, especially in, in, in COVID restrictions are staying at home, they play the guitar, they play the piano, or whatever. Um, and I would encourage you to... Um, to to, to remember that the difference between a player and an artist is emotion. Try to play with as much emotion as you play your melodies as possible. Uh, and if you can't figure out how to do it, certainly ask your teacher if you've got one. Or listen to, you know, on YouTube, there are recordings of nearly any song. Listen to your favorite recordings and think about, you know, how, about how that emotion is gotten out, you know, is brought out in the way that, that is sung or performed. By the way, that's also something you might want to do as you listen to music. You know, uh, you can just listen and hang out. Sometimes I do that. Uh, people who are, uh, you know, more intellectual, they listen to classical music, they may have taken the iconic uh, music appreciation courses by Robert Greenberg on the great courses or in college, uh, and they try to analyze the theory or the, the structure of the music. But there's a third way, which is the emotion. As you listen, try to, try to See if the music can evoke the emotional moments of your life, the happy moments, the sad moments, the moments that made you angry, that made mo those that were motivating. That could be re really helpful. One more. Oh, I guess I want to. Um, there's a, 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 a talk about my anomalous music taste. There's something called Big Fat Band, big P H A T band that I really love. And my favorite tunes is called Hunting Wabbits Three, and also A Few Good Men. Uh, a few good men as the best guitar solo I've ever heard at the 156 mark in that. And these are all available free on YouTube. All right, so now I do play the piano, and I want to talk a little bit, of, I want to demonstrate a little about the emotion um, that I, at least I will try to play this, this thing. I'm going to play something, I'm going to play Over the Rainbow, because it's one of the old songs that everybody tends to like. Um, and um, we'll see if you can uh, sense my efforts to try to bring out as much emotion in as I can. But first, I should let you know, you're listening to How to Do Life on KSFP Public Radio in San Francisco, 102.5 FM. Or, of course, if you're just watching this on YouTube, that's great. Um, uh, I'll be back in a moment, and I'm setting up the webcam uh, in front of my little keyboard. Marty Nemco back again here at uh, How to Do Life on KSFP and here on YouTube. And I 
don't know if you can see the keyboard. I think I've got it aimed right, but I can't tell for sure. So I apologize if you can. Anyway, as I said, uh, you know, amid COVID, we are uh, listening to more music, among other things. I'm talking here about favorite recreations. And uh, one of the things, whether you're a, you're a, a player of uh, whether piano or guitar or whatever, or you're a listener, I really think that one of the more enjoyable ways to uh, experience music is to try to build as much emotion as you can. So now I'm going to try to uh, play Over the Rainbow uh, with uh, suffusing it with what I think is the appropriate emotion. talking. So we are talking about how to um, make the most of the recreational opportunities that have not been taken away from us in this era of COVID when we uh, can't go to concerts, dangerous to go to bars and restaurants even if they're open, potentially dangerous. Um, so um, now I want to turn away from, uh, from music to eating. You know, one of the things that's uh, you know, it was George Bernard Shaw who said that uh, the most sincere form of love is food. And to cook for somebody, bake for somebody, is indeed uh, one of the more rewarding things you can do. And maybe if you have a little more time these days, because amid the COVID shutdown, you may not be working quite as hard or quite as much, uh, trying out that difficult recipe, even if it fails, so what? You know, that souffle grand marnier, or whatever you feel like making. Um, so... Uh, you know, the, of course, you know, in terms of eating, we're all home more and we're, you know, like in college, we used to call it, we gained the freshman 10 or a freshman 15. At home, this could be the COVID 10 or the COVID 20. Um, you got to be careful, of course. But um, uh, working on little cooking things that are, you know, sometimes things are very easy. They don't have to be that complicated. But you've got a little more time. So try some simple things that are fun. Like, you know, I have a thing for, car I'm a carb guy, unfortunately. So you know, great biscuits. If you're not great for making them in a scratch, for example, um, uh, what's the name? Red Lobster is known for its its uh, its cheddar cheese biscuits, and they have a mix of it that I that I've used, and it tastes great. So even if you're a crappy cook, fine. Um, it gives you a chance to try stuff. Uh, I don't think I need to spend too much time on that. Um, 
Uh, anything else I want to say about eating? Uh, the eating during the... Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, let me talk about, you know, you're obvi we're obviously spending more time at home. And uh, there are ways to even make that a recreation. You know, that's what we're talking about here, that give you a large, reminding you of the larger context if, if you're just joining us. Uh, this is How to Do Life, and I'm talking about recreations in the time of COVID. You know, I've talked about uh, how to make the most of walking and hiking, how to make the most of reading, how to make the most of listening and playing music, uh, a little bit about making the most of eating and perhaps cooking. Uh, and, uh, and now we're talking about making the most of home. Since we're home all the time, it can be a source of recreation. Um, you know, rearranging the furniture doesn't cost you anything. Most people now are not, you know, with the COVID economic problems, are not in the, in the able to or willing to spend big money on remodels or whatever. But certainly rearranging the furniture, getting us, you know, one simple, you know, changing one light fixture from something that was functional to something you might really like in a place where you're all the time, whether it be in the dining room or the kitchen, uh, you know, might be worth doing. You know, painting one wall, that costs next to nothing. And it can, you know, especially if you choose it like a bold color, um, that can um, make a big difference. We took our, our beige wall, a very off-white, Navajo white walls, and we painted one wall kind of a d relatively dark blue gray and then had a put a, a, a kitchen a, a yeah, kitchen clock on it that was matching and it really transformed the room at almost no expense um, so and also you know maybe one of the more obvious again no cost ways to uh, improve your home is you know so many people um, have houses that have gone that gotten too cluttered you know, it could be a bedroom, it could be the dining room where it's piled high with papers, or simply it could be your garage, your basement. Um, you know, and you get overwhelmed and you become a pack rat and you all know that TV show Hoarders. But maybe you want to take one corner of one room that you would feel most gratified of cleaning up and maybe, you know, give that stuff to Goodwill or Salvation Army or St. Vincent de Paul. Um, might, be a, might be a good thing to, um, might be a good thing to, uh, to consider doing. Um, Putting shelves in, you know, my wife and I, we put, our garage was fortunate, it's, it's tall, and it was, so there was all this wall space. We just put, you know, shelves and cabinets, and we greatly increased the amount of storage space we had at almost no cost. You know, we bought uh, Home Depot or Ikea shelves and a one, one nice cabinet, and uh, a wall cabinet, and voila! You know, for a small amount of money, we, we add a lot. Also, gardening, of course, is another inexpensive way. You know, the, you know, stores are always going to try to get as much money as they can out of you, but it's really, you can garden very inexpensively by focusing on six-packs. Buying six-packs of whether it be vegetables like tomatoes or corn or, uh, or, or flowers like in the summer here like zinnias or, uh, uh, or marigolds. Uh, you know, those can be a very inexpensive way to create beauty in, in, in your home. And, you know, in case of tomatoes and such, it's a little late to plant tomatoes, but still probably, maybe if you live in a, like where I do in Oakland, California, you could probably still pop in some six, six packs and still have, uh, especially early, you know, varieties like Early Girl uh, that, uh, that, that only take 55 or 60 days or debut. Um, those varieties of tomatoes that get you tomatoes in two months, you can have tomatoes very quickly. But that's uh, a little more detail than maybe we need to go to. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of recreation uh, in the era of COVID is uh, letter writing, just, just because. You know, uh, and handwritten letters, have, you know, in an era of, of emails and texts, there is a certain emotion that gets conveyed that you can't convey in an email with, di with bits and bytes, digital, but you can in a handwritten letter. So I have, uh, I write handwritten notes. Let me show you what I got. I have two different kinds. I will write, um, for those where I want to be more artistic, I've got the, this kind of very long, nice note paper and envelopes. And when I'm a little more formal, I, uh, I want to write something longer. I like, I, I like Asian stuff, so that's another Asian thing. And then if I want to be a little formal, I have these note cards with my name on it. And I'm frequently writing letters. And I also, and again, just a way to make things fun, I, um, let me show you. Let me show you. Oh boy. Okay. Two things. One, I buy stamps at pretty much face value or to mint stamps off of eBay, and I have a whole variety from very old ones like these. I don't know if you can see. They're very old. They're turn of the century, and up to newer ones. I have a whole sheet of Gandhi stamps because I like Gandhi, and um, I put the right. Here is more recent ones. You know. Anyway, I put the right stamps 
on, I, I choose these steps individually depending on who I'm writing to. And if I really want to go to the, all the way, I actually use sealing wax. You can get these sealing wax kits with different colors, sealing wax which get melted in this little, little thing. You just put a, a little lighter thing underneath it for a minute and then you, you pour it onto the back of the envelope and it, it just gives a very human touch. I think that writing human letters also slows us down and enables us to write more reflectively. Uh, and it's a really way to make connection. It's a, I think it was John Donne who said, letters mingle souls. And I think, there is some, I think there is some truth to that. So think about who you might want to write. Oh, and I've just taken up writing to prisoners. There is a, um, a website called writeaprisoner.com where you can pick, you know, they have uh, thousands of prisoners who are really looking for uh, somebody to pen pal with. And I've just started writing to one. Um, just make sure some of them, you know, are looking really for money and housing, and you may not want to be doing that. But, you know, there's an unusual form of writing that you might want to consider. And again, if you've got a little more time now in the time of COVID, this might be a good time to do that. Uh, I picked, you know, we all have our tastes. I picked, I went to look through hundreds of these prisoner profiles, and I found a guy who was around my age, who was very intelligent, um, who, you know, who did a bad thing, but uh, he, you know, uh, you know, we all made mistakes, and uh, uh, I felt we could have a nice conversation, and maybe I, you know, written pen pal conversation, and I might be able to be of some, I don't know, upbeat hope or whatever, while still being realistic. So anyway, um, you know, think about the old-fashioned letter writing just because writing to somebody who's in your life, who maybe you haven't seen for ten or twenty years, and you can just say, "Hey, you just popped into my head." And uh, I, I have fond memories of blah. Uh, just figured I would check in and tell you a little bit about me, and I'm curious about how you are. Pretty effortless thing to do. So now we have only a minute or so left, so let me just summarize what we're talking about. We're talking about the topic here today on how to do life uh, with Marty Nemco and me uh, is recreation in the time of COVID. And we talked about how to make the most of walking. That is, you can bring a problem with you or something to think about and write it down in a memo pad, your best thoughts when you're exercising like that. You can really, um, you're less distracted and the oxygenation of your brain makes you think better and you can really accomplish a lot. And of course, it's time to zone out as well. Reading, thanks to the, you know, the Google, finding articles on whatever topic you want, uh, uh, except for the politically incorrect, which apparently they're censoring these days. But anyway, uh, do a lot of reading. Uh, you can find articles which in a very short amount of time gives you the distilled wisdom of people. Uh, listening to music, again, Amazon Music, you can find for 99 cents almost anything, or Spotify you can use. If you're playing, try to play, or when you're listening, try to listen with emotion. For the emotion, you know, the events that were evocative in your life, or as you're playing, try to play with as much emotion as you can. And if you don't know how to do that, find, listen to the best version of the of the piece that you or the song, and try to imitate it. Uh, eating, good time to try experimenting and be risky with uh, with recipes, and with home decor, you can think about cleaning one corner of one room, rearranging the furniture in one room. Uh, painting one wall, wallpapering one wall, and then finally, think about writing, handwriting some just because letters, either to somebody who has not been part of your life for a while, or is currently, or um, even a pen pal at the various pen pal websites like writeaprisoner.com. In any event, um, I do thank you for watching. I, this is Marty Nemco reminding you that we find comfort among those who agree with us, growth among those who don't.